Welcome today from Arcadia First Baptist Church in Santa Fe. This is a lesson for young children, two, three, four, and five years old. I'm Miss Terry, and I'm glad you're watching today because God has something he wants you to learn from his Bible. Our lesson comes from the Bible. Everything in the Bible is true. It is God's holy word to us. It tells us about God, and it tells us how he wants us to live. Let's begin today with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for being with us today and help us to be great listeners and to uh, be very still and learn from you. Thank you for this church that wants to reach children to teach them about Jesus. We ask that you help us focus on this lesson. Amen. Well, before we begin our lesson, I have a Bible game. It's called a What Is It game. And it's, I'm going to give you some clues and your answer is going to be a theme from the Bible. Listen carefully to your first clue. What is it? Daniel was thrown into a big pit with me. God closed my mouth so that I would not eat him. I am known as the king of the jungle. What is it? If you said lion, you're right. What is it? We are God's messengers. We leave heaven and we tell people what God wants us to tell them. On the night that Jesus was born, we fill the sky. What are we? Angels, you're right. What is it? I am a set of laws. God wrote them on a stone. Moses taught all of these rules to the people. What is it? You said the Ten Commandments, you're right. Our last one, many men wrote me, I am the truth. I am God's word written in a book. What is it? If you said the Bible, you are right again. The Bible is God's word. Now we are learning a verse from the Bible. It's found in John 1, 1. Practice with me. In the beginning was the word. Say it. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. Say it one more time. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. Now say it without looking. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. Very good job. It's important to learn God's word and to put it in our heart. Now, I know that you're missing being with your friends and because you like to be with your friends when you learn about Jesus, and I like to be with my church friends too. In fact, I know a song about going to church. Let's sing it together. I like to go to church. I like to go to church. I like the things we do there. I like to go to church. We read our Bible there. We read our Bible there. I like the things we do there. I like to go to church. We talk to Jesus there. We talk to Jesus there. I like the things we do there. I like to go to church. Did you know that Jesus went to church too? They called their church a temple. And our lesson today is about when Jesus was a boy. And we're going to look in the Bible in the New Testament in Luke 2. Everything in the Bible is true. Our lesson comes from Luke 2. And last week in Luke 2, we learned that God had sent his promised Savior, Jesus. He was born as a baby. Jesus is all God and he's all human. And he grew up just like you. Well, there was one difference. We don't really know a whole lot about Jesus as a boy, but your parents have hundreds and hundreds of pictures of you and videos. They have lots of things that you've done when you were a newborn baby, when you were just learning to sit up, when you were a toddler, and now as a big child. You know, babies don't do very much, do they? They just sleep and lay around and cry and eat. But you have learned to do a lot of things. You can walk, and you can talk, 
and you can go to the bathroom by yourself and you can even put your clothes on by yourself and you learn a lot of things too. You know your colors and you know animals and you know your numbers and your ABCs and you are going to learn a whole lot more as you grow up too. Well, so did Jesus. When he was about 12 years old, his family took a trip. And today when we take a trip, a lot of times we get in our car or we go on an airplane. But back in Jesus' time, when they took a trip, they walked. And their trip was going to be walking about 60 miles, and that's a long way. It was going to take them about a week to travel. And they didn't travel alone. They went with their family, their cousins, and their aunts, and their uncles, and all of their friends from their hometown of Nazareth. And they were going to a special holiday celebration. If I asked you, I bet you would say your favorite holiday is Christmas. Well, to the people of Jesus' time, their favorite holiday was the Passover. And they would all go to the big city of Jerusalem together and celebrate. And the celebrate didn't just last one day, it lasted eight days. And so while they were there in Jerusalem, they spent some of their time celebrating at the temple and some of their time celebrating at home with family and friends. And then when the holiday was over, they started to walk back. All of the hundreds of people walking back together to Nazareth. And Mary and Joseph had been walking for a while when they realized they hadn't seen Jesus in a while. So they started asking their family, have you seen Jesus? Is he with you? They asked their friends, is Jesus walking with you guys? And no one had seen Jesus at all. So Mary and Joseph decided he must have stayed in Jerusalem. So they turned around and went back. Now Jerusalem is a really big city. And Jesus was just a boy, a boy 12 years old. The Bible tells us they looked and they looked and they looked and they finally found him at the temple, at the church. And he was sitting there listening to the teachers and asking them questions. And the Bible uses the word astonished two times. Maybe you've seen the facial expression like this. This is astonished. They were amazed. They were surprised. The first thing that amazed them was that Jesus was sitting in the temple talking with these people. And the second time God uses the word astonished in the Bible, it was the teachers and the church leaders of the temple who were astonished at Jesus because he understood so much and he was asking such smart questions. And so Mary goes up to Jesus and you know she's been anxious and worried. He's been lost. They haven't been able to find him. And she says, son, why did you treat us like this? I've been so worried and we've looked everywhere for you. And Jesus respectfully answered her and he said, didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? And you know, that can mean a couple of things. One, we know that God is really Jesus's father because Jesus is God. So yes, he's going to be in his own house. And second, everything about God, Jesus wanted to be around. And that was the place to look. If you were looking for Jesus, where should you look? You should look in his house, in the temple. And, you know, Mary and Joseph didn't totally understand. And I'm sure as a parent, there was a lot of things with Jesus that they totally didn't understand. But what the Bible says next is very important because these are the last few things that God tells us about Jesus when he was a boy. In verse 51, he says, Jesus went home with them, and he obeyed them in all things. God wants you to do that, too. He wants you to obey your parents because it teaches you to obey him. And that's our job. Our job is to obey God. And your first step is learning to obey your parents. When we obey God... The Bible tells us it shows that we really love him. Now, when you love your mom, you give her a kiss or maybe a hug, or sometimes if it's just a friend, you may give him a high five. But when we really, really, really love God, the Bible says you will obey. 
So if we want to show how much we love God, we obey him. And then in verse 52, it says that Jesus grew. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and people. And those are four things that we're going to talk about for just a little bit. God wants you to grow in four ways, just like Jesus. And the first thing is, the Bible says, in wisdom. That involves your mind. you got to use your mind to be smart. And what's the most important thing God wants you to learn about? Him. Him and his word. He wants you to know his word, and he wants you to know him. Now, we know a lot of other things. You know a lot about animals. You know a lot about Spider-Man. You even know a whole lot about Star Wars. And all of those things are fun to learn about. But the most important thing we can learn if we want to grow and be wise like Jesus is to learn from his Bible. Let mama and daddy read you the Bible stories. Memorize Bible verses and remember to pray to God. The Bible says that Jesus grew in stature. That's talking about your body and it's talking about your size. And, you know, we can't control how tall we are or how big we are. That's all God's plan for us. But there are some things we can do to help our body be healthy. And we're doing some of that right now by staying at home and not getting around other people. Right now, we have a bad sickness going around. And we know that it's good for us to stay home to be healthy. So that's one thing you're doing right now to keep your body healthy. Some of the other things that we do are not exactly fun to us, and, and we even kind of get mad sometimes, and you might even cry and get mad at Mama and Daddy when they ask you to do these things, like when Mama asks you to eat very good food, like your vegetables and your meat, and you would rather have ice cream and candy, because Mama and Daddy know that your body needs that good, good food, fruits and vegetables, to help your body grow. And when mama and daddy say it's time for bed and you start crying and whining and no, I don't want to go to bed, they're not punishing you. Your mama and daddy understand that your body needs time to rest. And the smaller you are, it seems like the more rest you need. So when they say time for bed, they're not being mean to you. They're, they're taking care of you and they're saying take care of your body so it can grow. Another thing your mom and dad may say is to turn that TV off and get up and do something. You need to be moving around and exercising and using your body the way God wants you to. So you can grow in your mind and wisdom and you can grow in stature in your body. And when you do that, you're acting like Jesus. The two most important ways that we can grow and act like Jesus the Bible says that Jesus grew in favor with God. That means he pleased God. He made God happy. How did he make God happy? He made God happy by doing what God said, by being what God wanted him to be, by doing what's right, by talking to him and by listening. And that's your job too, making God happy, pleasing him. Something that's a little bit harder, though, sometimes is the very last thing. It says, and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and people. We are not the most important. You know, sometimes we're really, really selfish, and we say things like, I wanted that toy, or that's mine, you can't have it, or I wanted to watch a different show. Did you hear all of the I and the mine? We're not the most important person and sometimes we act very selfish and we get mean and we get bossy. <clears throat> but the Bible tells us that we're supposed to be a good friend and treat people right. I know a song about my best friend. My best friend is Jesus. My best friend is Jesus. Love him, love him. My best friend is Jesus. I love him. My best friend is Jesus. Thank him, thank him. My best friend is Jesus. I thank him. My best friend is Jesus. Praise him, praise him. My best friend is Jesus. 
I praise him. My best friend is Jesus. Serve him, serve him. My best friend is Jesus. I serve him. And you know, in that song, those are the things that God wants us to do. To love him, to praise him, to thank him, and to serve him. You have been a really great listener today. I want you to listen to your parents because they're listening to God to lead you. We're going to pray and close our lesson now. Jesus, thank you for being our Father, for being our God, and teaching us how you want us to act. Help us obey you and love you. We ask this in your name. You have a great week this week, and you continue to go with God and love him. And remember, God is always with you.